This tutorial will cover a range of projection types that are common in architectural representation and show you how to construct them using the two cameras available in Rhino. So to start off with, I'm going to make a box, a cube, starting at the origin and one unit dimension. Uh, so we can use this cube to start to look at the two cameras available in Rhino. And when we talk about projection, we typically talk about two basic types. Uh, perspective projection, which mirrors the way that we experience the world through uh, one viewpoint, and a parallel projection, which is more of an analytical view, which maintains the dimensions in, in objects, but is a less realistic um, representation. So we can switch between the two types of representation. Um, if we don't have any geometry selected, we can go to the properties tab. And here you'll have the properties of the camera and you can actually switch between the two types. You can see here we have perspective and parallel and then one subtype, two point perspective, which I'll get into in a little bit. So perspective view, you see here you can orbit around the objects, gives you a realistic representation of the object um, because you can see we have uh, different vanishing points. So the, the lines in the geometry that should be parallel, like in this cube, don't stay parallel and you get this foreshortening where the size of objects gets smaller as they get farther from the camera. And we can accentuate that by changing the focal length of the lens of our camera. So if we decrease that, we can actually exaggerate this foreshortening or this distortion that happens from the perspective. You can see that this point is closer to the camera and that point is farther so these lines are getting smaller. And here you can actually see the vanishing points forming as the geometry uh, gets farther away from the camera. Now if we switch to a parallel view, um, you can see here we still have a 3D representation of the object, but now all the lines that are parallel in this cube maintain, um, maintain that parallel relationship. So we have no distortion in the scale of objects, um, but it's not as immersive or realistic a depiction. So let's talk about parallel projections in a little bit more detail. Um, as with all cameras, um, the, the, the representation is constructed in terms of the projection of the geometry onto a plane in space. And we can actually visualize that plane for the different cameras uh, by going to our view options, clicking the down arrow, and going to set camera and show camera, or hitting F6. And this will actually show the projection plane um, and location of the camera for a view in the other views in Rhino. So if we if we open up the four view setting and we zoom in, we can see that um, in the other views we have this representation of the camera and its projection plane. And I'll just switch this to the perspective view, turn off the grid, and zoom in. So here you can see how that view is actually constructed in Rhino. We have the camera location, a camera target, and this is the projection plane onto which that geometry is being projected. Um, so when we get into parallel views, there's different types that you may have heard of. The standard one is um, called the normal parallel projection. So I'm just going to turn off my camera here. And normal projections are projections that are aligned uh, to the cardinal views of the object. So the major planes x, y, uh, X, Z, Y, Z planes. Um, if you're working with a more or less rectilinear shape, these are views that are aligned directly with the faces of, uh, of the shape. And in architecture, these are known as elevations. So in Rhino, by default, you have these four views. Uh, the ones at the bottom, the front and the right view are your normal elevation projections. So the camera, it's a parallel camera. It's an al aligned directly with the front and the right face of the object. And at the upper left, you have the top view, which is in architecture is called the plan view. And that's aligned with the horizontal plane or the ground plane of the object. So normal views are very useful because they maintain proper dimensions and angles in your drawing. So here, if we have the plan view, uh, you can see that you see the square representation of the face uh, very accurately. But the limitation is that they don't represent the third dimension. So if we have a plan view, we can't really tell much about the height uh, of the building. 
if we have an elevation view, we can't really tell much about the depth uh, of that geometry. So a modification of the normal projection is a type of parallel projection uh, called an axonometric. And the axonometric basically uh, takes a parallel projection and represents all three uh, dimensions of the geometry by mapping the dimensions onto a set of axes in the 2D view. Um, so the parallel uh, camera in Rhino allows you to generate these kind of axonometrics more or less uh, interactively. And what's actually happening is you're just moving that projection plane from being uh, normal or perpendicular to a view. You're just rotating that projection uh, plane around the object to generate these different views. And to analyze this a little bit further, I'm actually going to take this geometry in my parallel projection view and run the make 2D command to actually create that axonometric drawing. And I'm going to turn on hidden lines and click OK. And then in the top view, I see my drawing. So this drawing is an axonometric uh, because it is a parallel projection. All of the lines that should be parallel stay parallel. But uh, you see the representation of the three axes mapped onto this new set of axes. So let's just draw out using the line command the three axes that we've created in our axonometric. So we'll just continue these lines. I'm kind of hovering over the corner here and I'm hitting tab. So I maintain that direction and dragging that line out. So these are a new set of axes that actually define the construction of this axonometric. And axonometrics are typically defined by the angles between these axes. So I can run the dim align, uh, dim angle command. And my units are off, so I'll just adjust the size of my dimension stringers. By changing the scale here. We can dimension the other angles as well. So these angles are provide the definition of the uh, axonometric along with the scaling factors uh, which are used to scale the geometry along the different directions. So because we're maintaining this parallel lines the geometry doesn't get distorted uh, with size, but it is affected by the scale factor along these uh, different dimensions. So if we select our cube, I'm going to use the scale command to scale this cube so that it is one unit in length. And now that we've done that scaling, uh, because of the parallel nature of the projection, we know that all the other edges running in that direction should be the same length. So if I use the dim aligned command, you can see that that's 10. It's actually 10 millimeters, one centimeter. And all the other edges running in the same direction should have the exact same length. However, in the other dimensions, that's not necessarily true, right? So I can mention this um, because of the way the angles are constructed that is now no longer a true dimension. However, all of the edges in that direction share the same dimension. And the same can be said for the Z dimension as well. So that's a basic construction of an axonometric. You can see there, there can be infinitely many number of different axonometric projections uh, based on the definition of these uh, angles and also the relative scaling uh, of the geometry along the different axes. Um, so typically in Rhino, you know, you can just pick a view you like, but if you want a little bit more control of your projection, there are several different specialized types and it has to do with how you start to constrain these different dimensions. The simplest type of axonometric is called an isometric. <clears throat> and as the name suggests, isometric is an axonometric which uh, where all the angles and all the scaling dimensions are the same. So that's what the word ISO refers to, is that all the scaling is the same. So if we want to construct that kind of isometric from scratch, we can start with a line going vertical, that's our z-axis, and then we can evenly lay out the other two axes around, uh, around the central point. 
so we can use the rotation command to rotate that axis 120 degrees. So I'm going to click copy yes. And then 240 degrees more. So because a circle has 360 degrees, an even layout of these axes has all of them 120 degrees apart. And then we can start drawing our cube by actually drawing out along each axis in the unit that we want. So I'm going to draw a one unit edge there. I can copy this over, also one unit. You can see how I can start to kind of manually draw out this cube one edge at a time. So this is a straight isometric representation of a cube. If we dimension any of the edges, they maintain their true length. And all of the angles in the drawing are 60 degrees apart, right? Because this is a construction of 100 degree axes. So the axial metric is a kind of famous projection in architecture uh, because of its ability to actually make measured drawings that represent all three dimensions. In the times before computers, um, people actually construct these kind of isometric drawings by hand using this kind of construction that I described. And then you can actually give this drawing to someone else and they can get usable dimensions uh, from it. So they can actually measure the walls and figure out how long the walls are. Uh, but the limitation with uh, isometrics is that while they represent all the true dimensions uh, of the object in all directions, uh, the angles are not maintained. So we know in the cube that this interior angle uh, should be 90 degrees, all of them should be. However, here we have this interior angle at 60 and this one at 120. So that's the kind of limitation is that the angles uh, aren't maintained, so it would be difficult to use it as a kind of documentation, say for a floor plan, where you have to know not just the length of the walls, but also how they're oriented relative to each other. Um, so if we want to create a, an axonometric, which actually maintains those dimensions, there is a drawing type for that, and it's called the plan or elevation oblique. So oblique is a kind of axonometric where um, you maintain the dimensions and the angles along two dim directions, but then you distort the angles and the dimensions in a third angle. And this kind of projection is not possible with a standard parallel projection, so it has to actually be constructed uh, manually by changing the actual geometry in Rhino. Um, but just so we get some intuition about this, um, basically, the oblique starts with a normal projection. So here is the a plan view of our geometry. And in the plan view, in the normal projection, you see that the, the right angles and the lengths are maintained in one dimension, but we're missing that third dimension. So what we can do is actually, we can just start sketching that third dimension going in another direction in the drawing. So for example, if we wanted to show the height of the cube, we can start to sketch these parallel lines and complete that kind of 3D representation. You can see it's a geometry kind of moving away from that plan view. And in this case, everything about the plan is, uh, is maintained, but in the elevational information, both the angles and the, the, the distances might be distorted. Now, if we have a piece of geometry already in Rhino, we can simulate this kind of uh, oblique view by actually uh, rotating and skewing the geometry itself. So I'm going to start with um, my view here and go to the top view. First I'm going to rotate the geometry around a corner by 45 degrees. Okay, so there's my new cube. And then I'm going to take this cube 
and I'm gonna skew the geometry relative to the Z axis. So I'm actually gonna take the geometry and sort of flatten it or move it down or lean it down onto the, onto the page. So to do that, I can use the shear command. Shear command asks for an origin point and a reference point So to do this, I can use the shear command. Shear asks for a origin point and a reference point along which you want to do the shearing. And this can be a little bit tricky based on how your uh, C planes are set up. But what I found to work pretty well is to go into one of the elevational views. And if you want to flatten something relative to the Z axis, to actually select that reference point in the normal view and then you can see, you can interactively move the geometry down. So it's actually kind of flattening along that dimension. And now if we move back to the top view, I'll just switch to my uh, kind of hidden line view. You see in the top view, what that's done is that it's maintained the relationship of all elements in this top view, but it's just kind of spread the elevational information out more or less creating that oblique. So now we can rotate this, you know, to get the final representation that we want. And the scale of this line in the third dimension is relative to the amount of shear that you create in the object. Okay, so now that we've covered all of the uh, parallel projection types, let's try it on a actual building. So here I have a model of the Ville Savoie by Corbusier. So we can start with the uh, normal projections. Here we have a plan view. So I'm just going to make 2D of that. I'm actually going to turn off the hidden lines in this case. I'll make 2D, turn off hidden lines. Click OK. So it's a little messy, you'd want to clean it up, but for the purposes of demonstration, I think it's, it's okay. And this is called a normal projection, and in architecture it's called a plan view if that projection is in the top-down view. Okay, now we can create the other views. So here's our elevation. Make to do that. And this is called a normal projection, but more specifically an elevation. And remember that a section is just an elevation where the geometry has been cut by a plane and then some geometry removed. So it's just an elevation that has some uh, cut in it. Okay, so let's move on to now the uh, axonometrics. So remember, uh, if you use the parallel camera, any view you choose is an axonometric of some type, uh, subject to some kind of uh, distortion. So we can, to generate uh, any general axonometric, we can just take this camera, find a view we like, select the geometry, and run make 2D. Okay, so there's the result. And this is and this is an axonometric. Now, if we want to create an isometric, we can do that using the Rhino camera. 
And we can do it by either being very careful about how we construct uh, or how we position our camera. Uh, for example, we can use a cube that bounds the geometry. So I'm gonna run the bounding box command, make a box around it, and then I can scale the, the box so it actually becomes a cube by changing the dimensions along each axis. And then uh, to construct isometric, I actually want the projection plane to be exactly aligned with the corner of uh, this box. So one way to do that is by actually creating a plane. So I'm using a surface, um, a surface from points command to create this plane. And then I can use Rhino's camera tools to align my camera to that plane. So I go down to set camera and uh, go down to orient camera to surface. I'll click on that new surface I made. And you see there, there's the arrow, that's the direction that's gonna be facing the camera. So I want to actually flip the direction that way. And now I have my camera, so I'm holding shift to pan the camera so I don't change the angles of the view. I can delete that plane and that cube, and now I have a true isometric projection of the Villa Savoie. You know, if I wanted to check it, I can make 2D, hit OK. Uh, so here's my drawing. So we're gonna believe for now that this is uh, isometric. And then we'll check it. And we can check it by measuring the, the angles, which should be 90, and they should be either 120 or 60 degrees. So do a dimension angle. There's 120, dimension angle again, and there's my 60 degrees. And I can also check that the, uh, the lengths are correct in each of these directions. Um, so that's that's a kind of um, manual way to, to create an isometric from your parallel view. Um, but since Rhino 5, Rhino actually has a shortcut to create these automatically by just running the isometric command. So the isometric command will create um, four different isometric views based on the four directions around your object. So you can do the northeast projection uh, that's here or the southeast, that's the one I made. So we can also switch to the southeast isometric and then select my geometry, run make 2D. And now we can actually check that what we got is the exact same projection we made before. So I'm just gonna align that. You can see that the two align exactly right. So now we can say for sure that this in fact is our isometric as opposed to this, which is our general axonometric projection. All right, so let's finish with a plan oblique. Uh, so we have our geometry here. I'm gonna select it. And now I wanna shear the entire geometry uh, relative to the Z axis. Um, to make this easier, I need to actually pick a point and reference point that's aligned with the Z axis. Uh, this is always easier if you first make a bounding box around your geometry. I'm gonna run the bounding box command. Here I have the bounding box that contains my building. And then I'm going to select shear. And to do this, I can select the box or not. Um, and then you run the shear command, origin point here, and then switch to the top view, or sorry, the front view, select the other point, and now I can shear my geometry relative to that Z axis. If I switch to the top view, see my geometry has been sheared, but just in one direction. So this is a possibility of a kind of straight on um, plan oblique, but usually we actually want to represent something of the other dimension as well. So I'm gonna first rotate my whole, all my geometry, 45 degrees, and then select it and then do the shear again. So I'm gonna shear kind of in this direction. So run the shear command Click that point. Oops. Click that point. 
get the reference in the top view, in the front view, and then share my geometry, and then I'll delete the bonding box. So now I can rotate this into the view I like, and here's my 45 degree angled uh, plan oblique drawing. Make 2D. And there's the final drawing. So you can see that although all of these three, and in fact these as well, are parallel projections, uh, they're quite different based on the construction and the way they communicate the geometry. In this case, we have a very good representation of all the, of all the dimensions in the drawing, but maybe not the angles. And here we have a privileged view where we can really clearly see the relationships of the different geometries in the plan, including the proper angles. But then the other view is, is more distorted. And we can do the same thing um, to create an elevation oblique just by uh, privileging the, the front or side view instead of the top-down plan view. One thing you'll notice is because now we're not just using cameras, but actually distorting the geometry, is they have to be really careful, right? And like if you have a project and you just want to create this oblique view, uh, you have to be careful that you save a version or copy your geometry before you do this so you have a reference to your um, actual work. Okay, in my case, I'm just going to copy all this uh, and then Control Z undo until I get rid of all my changes. And then I will delete these and paste back my drawings. So those are the types of uh, parallel or orthographic projections that you can create. And let's now talk about uh, the perspective views. So I'm going to switch to my perspective camera. You can see it immediately I have a kind of more realistic view of the geometry with vanishing points. And when we talk about perspectives, we usually talk about them in terms of the van number of vanishing points. So with three-dimensional objects, we have three possible vanishing points in the, in the perspective view. Uh, but we can also constrain the drawings so that they only have one or two vanishing points and there's a specific reason why we'd want to do that. So I'm going to start with uh, the first one which is a single point perspective. And single point perspectives we can kind of estimate here. Um, if I kind of position my camera this way and I'm going to turn on wireframe. Uh, actually I'm going to turn on my yeah, ghosted view so you can see a little bit about how the geometry is receding. So we have it in a single uh, point perspective is one vanishing point. In this case, it's kind of in the middle of the screen. You can see how all of the lines that are uh, receding into into the into the the drawing are going towards that single point. And what that means is that because we have a single point, we only have a foreshortening or the, re the re reducing of the scale of objects away from the camera in one dimension. In this case, it's the dimension of the building going back into the page. Right. So all these core edges of the building are vanishing to that point. However, the objects in the other planes, in this case, um, the, the, the plane of our elevation, are maintained. So you can see that these lines at the top and bottom of the floor are kept parallel, and the lines on the side are also kept parallel. So these lines are not receding because they don't have a vanishing point. And the reason why we'd want to create single point perspectives is if you want to maintain um, a kind of dimensioned accurate drawing in two dimensions but then allow that 3D geometry to recede away from the camera in the third one. And a good way to construct these is actually to start with your normal projections. So if I want kind of front elevation view I can switch to my front camera I put on my ghosted view again. And then once you're in this view, you just change your camera from parallel to perspective. And then be careful not to orbit your view. I'm just zooming in with my wheel and I can hold shift to pan the view around. And that won't change the relative uh, position of the camera and it'll maintain that single point perspective. So you see no matter how I move, I just have that one vanishing point. I'm just holding shift in my right mouse button to 
move that camera around. So from a technical point of view, the way that single point perspectives are constructed is by constraining the relationships between the location of the camera and the location of the target. You can see no matter how I move this view, the X location and the X target of the camera stays the same. So they're just looking exactly at the same uh, at the same location. And then the Z target and the Z location are also the same. So by constraining the Z, um, the camera and target along two uh, coordinate directions, we actually create this single point perspective. You can do the same thing with the top view. So you can start with the top view, switch to perspective, now I have that accentuation in the z-axis. I can change the, the lens length to accentuate that even further. Maybe I can switch to ghost of view. You can create quite dramatic representations that, this way. But the useful thing about the single point perspective is that any plane, any plan in this building is, prop, is accurate and properly dimensioned. So you can actually take um, a true plan of this building and lay it on top of this uh, single point perspective and they'll align exactly right. And you see now in terms of the construction of our camera and target, now we still have uh, two correspondences but in different directions. So we have the, the X location is matching and the Y location is matching while the Z camera position and target are different, which is obvious if you think about it because the camera is somewhere in front of the building and the target is somewhere beyond it. But as long as you match the other ones, you'll get that guaranteed single point perspective. So I'm actually going to go to my view and make 2D so we can save out this single point perspective. Need to scale it up a little bit. And to test what I said before, we can actually see how this elevational single point perspective matches with our original elevation drawing. We take this elevation drawing, maybe I'll just run like a uh, curve boolean on it to get the outline. And I'll take that outline over and I'll try to match it up. So I'm just going to scale it to fit. And you can see now how these two geometries align. Uh, maybe I will change the the width of this to make a thicker line. Go to print preview. Right. So you see that they do align. Of course, because the elevational view flattens everything, we have like this column goes all the way to the front and that geometry on the roof kind of goes to the front of the building. But in general, they are aligning. So that means that in the single point perspective, uh, we have that maintaining of the real dimensions and angles in one of the views. Okay, and that was called uh, one point perspective. Now we can move to the two point perspective. So it's the exact same idea, um, but now you're maintaining um, parallel directions, only one dim uh, dimension. So before we had parallel lines in two dimensions and foreshortening in one, now we have two dimensions where there's foreshortening. So we have two uh, separate vanishing points. And we can kind of simulate that by positioning our camera more or less like this. And you can see what's happening here is that um, all the geometry of these lines is receding towards the left side to some vanishing point that's off the screen. And then uh, the geometry in this plane is vanishing towards another vanishing point on the right side off the screen. But all the edges in the Z direction, so the vertical edges of this building, are still parallel. You can see it kind of move it to the edge of our screen, but these are completely parallel. And in fact, um, 
if this edge is parallel, it guarantees that all the other z edges are parallel. So here we don't have a vanishing point for the z dimension. We just have the two vanishing points for the x and y. And we can check this also with our camera settings here. Uh, for this kind of two point uh, projection, we just need to make sure that the z location and the z target match exactly. So you see I kind of eyeballed it, it's not exactly right. But if I change this now, and I fix my z location to be let's say 4.5, and my z target location to be 4.5, now we have a guarantee of a true two point perspective. You see that these vertical lines are completely lined up. And if I now move my camera uh, by holding shift, I'm gonna constrain the relationship between the camera location and the target. So that's called a dolly. So you're kind of moving the entire camera instead of just the position of the camera itself, right? So I kind of move this around and maintain that two point perspective. Uh, but it's difficult because if you want to get into a kind of lower view, you can see that the geometry goes off screen. And if I want to see that geometry, maybe I'll like move my camera, but now I'm breaking that uh, two point perspective relationship. And now I have this kind of foreshortening in the Z direction. And two point perspectives are really important in architecture representation and actually architecture photography. If you look at uh, drawings or photographs of buildings, more often than not, if they're professionally done, they're gonna maintain that two point perspective and try to keep as much as possible the vertical lines of the building parallel. And that's for whatever reason been agreed to as uh, the preferred representation of buildings that we really don't like to see, especially for tall structures, the building kind of vanishing into the air uh, because it gives a very distorted view of the height and, and, and the, the composition of the building. Whereas if we maintain the parallel lines in the Z dimension, we have a kind of better representation. So because of the difficulty of like kind of maintaining this two point perspective but getting the view you want, uh, newer versions of Rhino actually have the subsetting of a two point perspective. And if we switch to that, all this view does is it just maintains the parallel um, relationship of the edges in the Z direction while allowing you to freely rotate the camera on the object. And it's a very useful tool because uh, you can be free to kind of position the camera to see the part of geometry that you want, but still make sure that you're getting that parallelism. So to create this kind of view would actually not be possible with the basic uh, perspective camera. That's why we have this extra camera setting here. Uh, but that's very, very useful. Okay, now if we break that, so let's um, actually export this view. I'm just gonna select my geometry in the top viewport, switch to perspective, and then I'm going to make 2D to create that drawing. Drag it over here. And that is our two point perspective. You can see that these parallel edges or these uh, vertical edges are maintained parallel. And the third type is the most general. It's just a three point perspective. And we get that by moving the camera. Uh, well, first we have to switch to our basic perspective camera. And we just, we get that uh, three point perspective by default, just by moving the camera on the object. If none of these, uh, XYZ coordinates align between the camera and target, then we have a three point perspective. You might not see the vanishing points so clearly, uh, but you can always accentuate them by changing the focal length of the camera. So if we make the camera like really wide angle, you can see those vanishing points very clearly. There's one kind of, uh, there's one kind of over here, there's one over here, and there's one down here. Okay, so that's probably a little bit too exaggerated. Let me switch to a fairly wide angle lens, 20 millimeter. And then select my geometry, make 2D. And then switch to the top view and drag it out. And that is our three-point perspective.
Okay, so these are all the basic types of architectural projections that you see in, in representation. Uh, we started with normal projections, so these are orthographic or parallel projections which are uh, aligned to the faces of the building. So we have a, a, a top-down view, it's called a plan, a front view called an elevation. Now if we want to represent all three uh, dimensions, we can switch to a parallel view called an axonometric. So this just um, rotates the projection plane relative to the object to show all three uh, directions. If we constrain the relationship between the uh, the angles of the dimensions and the uh, the scaling factors, we can create a true isometric. So we saw how we can actually use the isometric command in Rhino to create that um, directly. Then we have the obliques, plan oblique, elevation oblique, which maintains angles and distances in, in one plane, but distorts them in the, in, in the other two. And this one we can't actually create with a camera. Uh, we have to distort the actual geometry by shearing it relative to an axis to create that view. And then we looked at the three types of perspective views. The one point perspective, which maintains a true elevational view with uh, receding foreshortening in the other direction. A two point perspective, which uh, maintains the verticality uh, of the vertical edges or the, the, the parallelism of the vertical edges. And then the most general three point perspective, which has uh, vanishing points along th all three dimensions. Okay, so give it a try. Uh, you can use uh, your own geometry or download um, building geometry from the internet and try to create all eight of these different types of views.